If you're more nervous, you're more likely to be short of breath and slightly more tense. So therefore, speaking may feel harder for you. If you assess, you know, do a bit of a risk assessment <laughs> of, of the stakes involved before you record, then what you can do is make sure that you're hitting all the points that you need to, to prepare your body and your voice appropriately. This is the show for creative entrepreneurs who have a message to share and want to live a life of freedom. Learn how to grow your network and net worth. Hear from exciting guests and more. My name is Dylan Schmidt and welcome to Digital Podcaster. Joining me on the podcast today is voice coach Nick Redman. Nick helps podcasters reach their speaking, recording, and performance goals. In this episode, I chat with Nick about getting over the sound of your own voice, how to warm up your voice before recording, and she shares a few quick tips at the end that you can start using immediately to improve your voice, which will help you improve the quality of your podcast. Please enjoy my conversation with Nick Redman. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Thanks. I've been lurking in your DMs for ages, so I'm really glad that I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Thanks yeah, for having I had me. A, I had an easier time getting Obama on the podcast, but, you know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, just you know, I'll, I'll tell him to pull his uh, finger out next time and get back to you. <laughs> I don't even know what I would talk to him about if he was on the podcast. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for joining me. I love what you help people do because I come from a background of some more technical gear related stuff, more marketing related stuff. And that all kind of is secondary to speaking and using your voice, which you help people with, and your tips are absolutely amazing. And right off the bat, like visit the episode description to learn about all things Nick, because if you're listening to this podcast, you need Nick in your life because we all need your advice and tips. And I don't see enough people talking about what you're talking about. It's a long winded way of asking this first question. How do you get over <laughs> disliking the sound of your own voice? Yes, it's the age old question, isn't it? And funnily enough, this was my first foray into the TikTok. Um, my, I accidentally, after like three TikToks, had this mad viral TikTok. And the thing that I asked was, do you hate the sound of your own voice when you hear it played back? And it got like, it's gone like 600,000 views or something, which for me with no followers at the time was insane. And it turns out loads of people hate the sound of their own voice. Um, I think. The roots to loving your voice are many fold. Uh, the first one is very, very simple, and that is listen to it a lot. <laughs> so if you're preparing to start a podcast, then there's absolutely no excuse or no reason why you can't every day just talk into your recording device on your phone or whatever your setup is, if you're practicing, and just record and listen back and record and listen back. You can start with five seconds a day if it makes you want to die inside. <laughs> then you can up it to like 30 seconds and you could just free talk or you could read something from a book if your podcast is going to be scripted and you need to get good at sight reading and sounding conversational anyway. But you have to just keep hearing yourself because one of the uh, reasons we don't like the sound of our own voice when we first hear it is actually because it literally sounds different to us. So when we hear our voice, when we speak just generally, like to the general public, we hear it uh, through our ears, obviously, because the sound comes out and it goes into our ears. But we also hear it through the internal structures in our head. So we hear internal vibration as well. So that gives us this weird kind of human stereo effect, which is a very different quality to when you hear it coming out of um, a little boom box or a speaker or out of whatever phone you happen to be listening to your voice on. So it literally sounds different and that can be terrifying. <laughs> you know, you think you've spent your entire life sounding kind of like this. And then you hear yourself like this, I like this. And that's a little bit shocking for people. So listen to it over and over and over again. That's a really good tip. Second thing is, um, maybe this is going from like a really super beginner tip to a, a really kind of extreme tip, but maybe that's okay. <laughs> and that is that remember that actually a podcast isn't about your voice at all. It's about how you're trying to affect somebody 
the impact you're going to have, what you're going to inspire somebody to do or think or feel or need or explore. And that's what your focus has to be. So the biggest tip I have for getting used to your voice is trying not to listen to it conversely. When you're recording, trying not to worry about it at all. You've got to focus on your message connecting with the person you're speaking to. And that is about much more than how you sound. Now, there's loads of ways that your voice can uh, betray you. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, whether it's nerves or breath or adrenaline or you're tired or you're ill. And of course, there are loads of ways I help people with that, whether it's warm ups or vocal health or dealing with nerves and breathing and things. But ultimately, it's not about your voice at all. Thank you very much. It's about your message and how you're trying to affect somebody. So try and just focus on that a wee bit more. Wonderful. I This made me think of a question that I don't know the answer to, and it seemed to go away, and I don't know why it went away, but it would happen randomly. Are you familiar? I don't even know if there's a word for it, but before I would talk, or this has happened over the years, where I would talk and randomly my voice would hit some, it's kind of like it'd go off road a little bit where, I, what do you, like it, it's like I'm going through puberty again or something. Oh, um, right. Yeah. Have you ever <laughs> had that happen or have you ever had a client be like, why does my voice do this? Yeah, lots of weird things happen to people's voices. And I think most of the time it's down to, well, a couple of things. One can be tension. So physical tension is the main thing that gets in the way of freedom of voice and control of the voice and variety and range and clarity. It's about tension. It's about the tongue being tense or the muscles around the larynx or the jaw or the breath coming from a tense place, you know, with the abs tight and the shoulders tense and maybe the posture being slightly inefficient. So the first thing that nearly every single voice quandary that I get through my virtual doors that we deal with is tension. So, you know, it's about alignment in the body, making sure that you are as physically aligned and head bone connected to the neck bone as possible so that you can release excess physical tension in the body. And then also about working on the breath, making sure that the breath is flowing because a lot of the time people sort of talk on a held breath and then it kind of sounds a little bit tight because they're trying to make sure they get right to the end of the sentence. And actually what we want with breath is movement and flow. So it's all about letting the breath go when it comes out weirdly, letting your breath come out when you speak rather than hold it back and letting the in-breath come in really flowing and easily as well. Um, what can sometimes happen with that little flip thing is that sort of it, what's happening is something at vocal fold level. So you're going from, for example, um, this is a bit technical, but like thin fold to thick fold, <laughs> Voc use of the vocal folds, or you're sort of starting in one place and then the vocal folds are vibrating one way, but then they're sort of vibrating another way for the next bit. And the main thing that's happening there probably is airflow. So I would definitely deal with breath in that situation to get the breath moving. Um, but those sorts of things happen a lot with nerves. Um, like I said before, our, our, when we get nervous and we get that adrenaline uh, impact, you know, which is exactly the same reaction in the body than if, you know, in caveman days, there was a woolly mammoth coming to eat your entire family. Like it's the same reaction. It's just, it's not a woolly mammoth anymore. It's a microphone or an audience of people or a difficult conversation at work. And our body has that fight or flight response. And those nerves cause all sorts of crazy things to happen. Sometimes people trip over, up over their tongue. Sometimes people completely freeze and they don't know what they were going to say. Sometimes um, it um, manifests um, in um, lots of, um, um, you know, um, sort of um signs. <laughs> That's a I bit like of a nerves tick. Because I'm from California, I like to throw in a lot of likes. <laughs> Like total, oh, like, like for sure. Like, yes. Yeah, like. Well, that's your accent. That's totally like brilliant. I'm the same Northern Ireland. We have like, and in, in Northern Irish, people are renowned for using more words than they need to use in every sentence. So they are because they use words like that aren't even ever needed, like to say what they want to say all the time. So they do. Do you know what I mean? Like, like we add words in like all the time. So we do now. Uh, that's just Northern Irish people. So we always use too many words. So I'm all here for likes and ums and ahs. I love them. Uh, some people on the listening end get a little bit upset with them. I don't know if you've ever, ever had that experience where someone's 
commented on any vocal tics that you have. Lots of my clients have. Um, I've completely forgotten the question now. <laughs> I did. Oh, it was just that little <laughs> vocal flip, but you like oh, answered yeah. it so beautifully that I was like, I'm learning so much. There I am throwing in the like. No one's commented on <laughs> it about me. It's something that I just highlight in my head, I think, because listening back more and more. And then I start yeah. noticing it sometimes in other people, especially looking at content all day, uh, editing and things like that. When people throw in, you knows, and I got to say, listening back to my own voice, I feel like I, my vocabulary has gotten so small with when I listen to the, my voice more, I'm like, I need to read more or something because I feel like I'm saying the same words over and over, but I think it's just <laughs> me consuming a lot of my own voice, unfortunately. Question for you. Do you have a warm up routine that's like beginner friendly podcasters could use to get their voice warmed up? Yeah. Do you know, I have one on my website actually that you can download. It's an audio track and it's a video. What a convenient thing to have available. <laughs> um, it's on my website under the resources section. So if you go to nicolaredman.com, um, I'll link that. There's, a, there's, I'll make sure to link there's that. literally a podcast to warm up. But it, to, to summarize what happens in it, it's basically my approach is always four stages. It's about body, breath, sound and speech. So it's about preparing the body, getting some tension released, getting the energy going, if that's what you need, if your podcast is really peppy and, you know, upbeat. Then it's about breath, getting the breath going, whether that for you needs to be release of the breath and centering and grounding and chilling it out, or whether, again, that needs to be energizing it and connecting to support and getting the breath flowing. And then the third thing is the vibrations themselves. So that's getting the vocal folds going and getting the sound and opening up some variety and different tonal qualities and different um, sort of resonance qualities in there so you get an exciting and interesting voice and nobody's like in your dm saying that you sound really monotone and boring which isn't actually a thing i mean monotone just hardly ever happens but that's a sidebar and then the fourth sometimes. thing oh yeah sorry i was gonna say i dm a lot of people okay? say this sounds monotone just no <laughs> yeah Be so people are really mean to people on the internet know. you know, <laughs> know. you just sorry, a really lovely thing. man i think <laughs> <laughs> just just picturing someone dming like this is monotone i'm like what a jerk sorry poor thing i know right continue. it happens <laughs> i get people in my like clients coming to me going my boss says i'll never get this promotion without uh changing my accent or my listeners tell me i'm too monotone or um somebody said i sound stupid or da 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 it happens all the time i like um, finding examples maybe I just... of like popular monotone people then being like look at this person they can talk in this straightforward voice lex friedman uh popular one of the most popular podcasters i mean that's i love his podcast uh, and i love lex but that's pretty he doesn't have much of a range there um i could see people well, exactly saying, and yeah. at the, ultimately it's about the connection with your message and your passion to share that and how you want to affect people you know it's about so yeah. it's ultimately as much as i hate to say it about so much more than your voice <laughs> yeah but the but, whole point is yeah. i help people not worry about their voice i help people yeah. not freak out and prepare their voice so they don't have to think about it that's the point anyway the fourth stage <laughs> yes thank you i was like brain <laughs> let's don't get forget. back on the motorway <laughs> Uh, sorry, highway. Um, fourth stage is speech. And that's all about the clarity of the sound. So that's making sure that you don't trip up over your words, making sure that things flow freely and you're not worrying about creating the sounds and also making sure that it feels really effortless to get the tongue where it needs to go to make whatever sound or to get the lips to close and that kind of thing. So yeah, it's a body, breath, sound, speech process for me. It can take and shouldn't need to take more than five minutes for a podcast or maybe 15 if you need a little bit of chilling out and a bit of grinding from nerves. But yeah, head to my website because there's one you can literally download. Does the voice and kind of the warm up, and I'm, I'm going to make sure to link to the resource page uh, in the show notes, but does the voice have, is any of that relate to being prepared for what you're going to say or is it doesn't really matter? I think probably there's a psychological element to preparing for what you're going to say. And that probably depends on your context, whether it's a live podcast, whether it's pre-record, there may be slightly higher and lower stakes or a feeling of higher and lower stakes there. Um, also, whether you're interviewing somebody or not, and whether you are really excited because they're like one of your crushes, or whether you're nervous because you have to actually take them to task and it's going to maybe be get a bit crunchy. 
So there's definitely an element of of psychological preparation that you need to go through. But what that can do to your voice, those environments can impact your voice. So if you're more nervous, you're more likely to be short of breath and slightly more tense. So therefore, speaking may feel harder for you. So if you assess, you know, do a bit of a a risk assessment <laughs> of of the stakes involved before you record, then what you can do is make sure that you're hitting all the points that you need to, to prepare your body and your voice uh, appropriately. Um, so what I, funnily enough, I've, I've written a book. <laughs> I don't know if I can mention it now. Um, <laughs> what but it's, you do? I'd, it's, it, it's out soon or maybe out already, depending on when you're listening to this. But one of the things I go through in the book is, you know, in those particular mic environments, what's at stake and how do you prepare for it? So it's like, if you are nervous, yes, you have to warm up your voice, but you need to do your body and your breath first, definitely, because you're going to be hyped up a wee bit. So I think if you're feeling um, a bit nervous or there's something going on in the record that psychologically you think will have an effect on you, then definitely focus on tension release and the out breath primarily. That is such a great point. You made me think of something I never pieced together a few years ago. Are you familiar with Tom Bilyeu? He has a podcast and YouTube personality. He has a show called Impact Theory. He's more mm. of like kind of a motivational type guy. Uh, really popular podcast. Anyways, he like really popular. And I had a client that was a guest on his podcast, but he had no idea who this guy was. He had no idea who Tom Bilyeu was. And had he known who he was and the other types of guests he'd had on and like how big it would have been, it probably would have been a different interview and he would have answered differently. He had no idea going into it. He was just like, wow, this studio is really nice. I thought it was, it was just uh, the <gasps> PR firm had set it up. And so he just shows up, you know, and wow, it's this, this really professional. He just does the interview. He's like, wow, yes, yeah, really great questions. And then like a month or two later, it comes out. He's like, what? Oh, I had no idea this guy was a big deal. And it's grown since then, but it was the best interview this this client had ever given because he, he went into adding no context, <laughs> nothing that's good or anything just cracks me up because I just know that if it if he would have known the <laughs> the result of it, he probably would have tripped up, maybe would have tried to like over answer some words and really nail it. But he went in co cool, calm and confident because he he didn't know how big it would be. <laughs> he just oh was my like, god, yeah. Show up. Um, I know, and and the I think as well, people are always like uh, doing loads of research and making sure they know who they're talking to and all that kind of stuff. And I would certainly want to go in super prepared, and I'd probably have accidentally found out who this person was. But it it is interesting to hear it from that side that maybe ignorance is bliss in some in some, some ways. ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you've listened to Digital Podcaster more than once and you're enjoying the episodes, you've probably noticed that I don't have ads where I try and sell you something. The reason for that is because I'm just simply trying to share tools and strategies that will help you become a better podcaster. If you're a repeat listener, all I ask is that you help the show by taking 30 seconds and leaving a quick rating and review at ratethispodcast.com slash Dylan. It really only takes 30 seconds, helps the show out, and it would mean the world to me. All you have to do is go to ratethispodcast.com slash Dylan, D-Y-L-A-N. Thank you so much for listening and taking a quick moment to do that. Let's dive back in. Last question for you. Do you have any quick voice tip for podcasters that you wish podcasters maybe knew more of? You just don't see it talked about enough. Just like a simple quick tip for us. Hmm. Yeah, I think. Let me, let me, let me just think about this a little bit. What's no, the no best thinking, way to go? Only speaking because this is a voice. <laughs> if I put loads of ums in, is that allowed? <laughs> um, <laughs> Buy some time. Um, okay. Okay. Oh, there's so many things that I would like to share, but one is fine. Okay. Can I give two? Can I give two? Two it, tiny ones. It's, it's okay. Two's okay, but it's got to be the absolute best two. They got to be perfect. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know me. I love perfection. I'm such a perfectionist. Um, number one, first one is alignment. So one of the things, alignment on the microphone. So one of the things that some podcasting clients talk about is the fact that if they're doing a few episodes in a row, they get a bit vocally tired or that their voice sounds different at the end of the day to how it was when they started. And one of the main things about that is their physical alignment on the microphone. So 
sometimes is a tendency, depending on your set as you adjust yourself. Well done. Just coincidence, uh, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure, sure. Um, one of the things I see is a lot of people reaching towards the microphone or kind of jutting their chin forward. And that puts a kink in the, well, voice apparatus. You know, it's like when you're drinking through a straw and the straw is nice and straight, it comes out easy. But if you put a kink in the straw, all of a sudden it becomes a bit harder. It's the same. The, you know, if your alignment is out of whack, it's harder for your voice to be made and harder for the breath to get through and for the vocal folds to vibrate. So just checking that your head and your neck um, and your shoulders and your back are all aligned in the most efficient way is a really useful thing to explore. So check you're not a chin judder or that your shoulders aren't kind of hunching over. Um, and a lot the of podcasters sec- do that thing too where they have a mic stand, but then they like talk, they're like, it's like a, they see the, it's like the cliche radio announcer guy that's like leaning into it. So Nick, uh, yeah. tell me about the, but. Yeah. Well, it's a, I think listen. it's a plosive thing as well, isn't it? They kind of work across the mic to like resist a uh, sort of remove plosives a little bit. So you get a bit less popping sometimes as well. Mm. So I just try cool and tell people. Like, so you know, cool. Like a so Howard cool. Oh, this whole of, thing. Where yeah. did that come from? Yeah. <laughs> oh, this podcast. <laughs> Oh, hey, what? Oh, hey, Mike. Didn't even see you there. Um, Yeah. So I, one of the tips in the book is like, forget the mic's there. You know, you need to set up your tech so you don't even have to worry about the mic and you can just talk. Um, Oh God, I think I've already given two and I was only supposed to give one. And then now it's going to be three. Three feels like a sweet spot. If one comes to mind, if one doesn't, that's okay. No pressure. (laughs) Um, Let your breath out before you let it in to start. So, most people when they're nervous or when they're preparing to record, they kind of get themselves all set up and they get ready and then they take a big breath. Hey! Um, and actually, it's much more useful to focus on the out breath than let a breath come in nice and easily and then get started. Um, mainly because when we take those big hulking breaths in, we're actually making it harder for our vocal folds to vibrate because there's lots of air pressure underneath. So it's harder to speak generally. Um, And the other thing is those big breaths tend to bring the shoulders and the chest into it. And that can also create tension in the voice and freedom, uh, restrict freedom in the voice. So I like to try and get people to focus on the out breath because it makes speaking easier because they tend to then work with a little bit less breath and trust the breath that's there. But also it's really nice for nerves. So when you're dealing with nerves, what you don't want is to take breaths in. You want to be blowing the breath out and then just releasing your belly and letting a nice, relaxed, easy breath come in afterwards. So alignment and breath, please. Also stay hydrated. Okay, that's it. Yes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, <laughs> right away. Um <laughs> <laughs> is there any recommendation on like breathing in through the mouth, out through the nose? Does it matter? Nah, when you're speaking, you just breathe through your mouth. That's the end of it. When you're doing lovely meditative breath work for your mental health and your like stability, nose for sure. But nobody breathes through their nose when they talk. Like no one's going to that party where the person's like, hi, thanks for coming. Can we just talk about <laughs> the cheese that's on offer here? It's really, really tasty actually. Like... <laughs> I, I am not. <laughs> Sorry, that made me cough. <laughs> I took such a big nose breath. Point is, I think you just made a great breathing. example. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. For speaking, mouth breath is efficient and absolutely um, perfect. <laughs> we don't need nose breathing. I did once go to a workshop, and every time that you asked the guy the question, before he answered the question, he would take a big, kind of really dramatic pause with a nose breath. And I was like, I have a life to live. Can we please get to the end of this queue? <laughs> so, Especially yeah, if they got a little breathe. whistle. Thanks. They got a little whistle, like in, their nose isn't clear. Yeah. And it's like, like. Yeah. Or nose? like mine's a bit stuffy today. So like there's a big snottery kind of. <laughs> the microphone nice, just is it? picking yeah. it up. Like, <laughs> that's unfortunate. Um, Can we remove that in post, please? <laughs> yeah, right. Unfortunately not. Um, two quick last questions for you. One, I just have to ask your book it, it, it's gonna have an audiobook version right <laughs> you know everybody keeps asking this and then they say are you gonna do it <laughs> yeah yeah and i'm like yeah because i'm a voiceover artist like it's part of my job i hope to yes i'm currently not quite sure when or 
that is going to happen because I don't do audiobooks as a voiceover artist because I have a very bad attention span. Um, but hopefully if it's my own book, I'll be able to commit to that for long enough to, <laughs> to get through it. But yeah, it will hopefully have an audiobook version. <laughs> I love that. I This is a story for another time, but I had someone offer me like a good chunk of money. I'm not a voiceover artist, and nothing in that. And like 10 years ago, they were like, I'll pay you X amount of money to read this book that doesn't have an audiobook version because they knew I had like the studio set up. It's like, okay. And I read it and I was like, this is so much. It was, I was halfway through. I was, nothing was making, I, I hadn't, didn't know what I was doing. It's a, it's a large undertaking. Oh my gosh, it's huge. Yeah. I have a lot of audiobook narrator clients and I have the utmost respect for them. It's such a skill and they do not get paid enough. Yeah. Well, you know, they do eventually, but like when you first get started, I mean, you've got to read the book, you've got to prep the book, you've got to record the book. A lot of them edit it themselves as well. It's like, I mean, days, weeks, long times. A lot of it's work. endurance, oh. real endurance. It really is. Um, last question. How can people work with you? Uh, well, a myriad of ways. Um, I do one-to-one. So I do packages of two sessions or six sessions, depending on what people would like. I do online courses as well. So whenever this goes out, I think I'll probably be in the middle of my online voice program, which is called the Vocal Empowerment Program, which is this amazing like six week program where we just deep dive into the voice training process and we give you all the tools and the techniques to prepare your voice, look after it, know what to do when it's not feeling great, get the most out of your breath and your range and your expression and just like really own and understand your instrument. Um, and then I also do, I have a, a Facebook group um, called the Voice and Accent Hub. You can pop in there and ask me questions and stuff. I've got a podcast, I've got two podcasts, but the most useful one for this is the Voice Coach podcast. Um, and I also do retreats. So you can come and hang out with me at my house and we can just do like voice training all weekend and sit in the hot tubs and it's great fun. So and loads, there's loads of ways. A lot of talking <laughs> at that retreat too. Right? A lot of talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of talking. A lot of talking about talking. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today, Nick. And uh, I can't wait for us all to take what you've shared and implement it uh, because we need it. <laughs> You're very welcome. Did I say what my book is called? <laughs> no, wait, no. I don't think I did. Called? This is classic person who's wrote their first book trying to tell people about the book but not saying what the book is called should we leave it a mystery is this a shall we it's a book <laughs> with words about voice just, it's just called on... that. <laughs> nick's book uh, it's called <laughs> on the mic and it's a uh, voice training for voice of artists podcasters speakers and presenters sweet sweet i'm gonna link to that I love that title too, On the Mic. So good. Thanks. Thank you, Nick. 